All right, all right, folks, we should be live. All right, we got She Rob in the house. Hi, She Rob. We got Herr Logi in the house. All right, all right, Herr Logi and Crazy Challengers. Unfortunately, won't be able to join, but wish all you guys a good productive session. Do your homework and listen to the professor giggly the giggle day. <laughs> Crazy Challengers. Have a great evening, whatever you're up to. We're gonna miss you, bro. And there is the wittiest from the wittiest. Wit fun fit in the house saying, here we go. And also, George Gabriel Jigget goes completely bananas in the race. Yo, let's get started. Hey there peeps, what's up? We are doing it again, we are back live in the just good old fashioned way on YouTube for everybody to tune in. I'm rocking excited about, um, wait, I gotta check, change the monitor here, like this looks much better. Just doing this, getting started with doing some something weird is always great. Um, also, you guys are all tuning in. Um, I'm super excited about today's session. We're going to have a lot of material in front of us, ahead of us, with um, today's chapter. It's a, uh, the last um, chapter in the book, I believe. Um, chapter two, <laughs> the last chapter. It's relatively short to the other chapters, but it's um, full, it's packed with insights, with super important information, uh, stuff we need to know if we want to go out there in order to perform a great card magic, right? The chapter on presentation. And I'm super excited doing this together with you guys today. Now, probably I have a totally red hat because I spent a super long day um, outside today um, and actually shutting caught, uh, 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 sh cutting short a little bit of my um, of my time for preparing today's session. Uh, we're going to do quite a bit of um, text exegesis, or what it's called, exegesis. You know, I'm going to read quite a lot um, today, um, trying to pinpoint uh, the most important um, aspects um, put into this chapter, and of course. As always, this is just my take, take on things, right? So whatever I'm saying today, this is not a final lecture or something, you know, this is just me um, kind of reflecting on my own learning process at the time being. So take, every, uh, take, um, take what I'm saying just um, as an input, as an um, inspiration for your own thought process, right? And of course, um, I'm not going to read the whole chapter. That would be silly. Um, uh, by the time of, uh, of these live sessions, uh, you should be doing your reading yourself, uh, figuring out how freaking productive it can be to um, study magic uh, from books. Am I right? We got some uh, more folks uh, uh, shuffling in. Um, Hashem, I said, said uh, you're cool, man. Thank you so much. Um, now, guys, um, this is uh, this is now uh, me trying to um, find back into the normal way of streaming, because uh, as some of you know, last week we did an uh, unofficial and a uh, Patreon exclusive live stream, the first of its kind, and it was quite a blast. Um, let me show you this here. Um, on our Patreon side, um, this is a this is a link which is still closed. Um, we're not gonna, not going to go public with this, um, but that's um, uh, here. Uh, we did this on Discord. Um, we had um, uh, f f six uh, guys tuning in, um, and we talked a lot. Um, we got to know each other better, and it worked surprisingly well. Um, uh, but there was a little um, mistake happening. Um, 
all the participants in the chat they were muted at the end of the recording so obs did not stream um, the sound from discord i'm super sorry about that because you guys were uh, coming up with so much great input uh, i enjoyed myself uh, heavily and and uh, so it's 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 a big memory for all of us now because basically this video now is just me speaking to um people just <laughs> opening their mouths <laughs> with no sound but uh, next time we do this um, I'm gonna have fixed the problem. I believe I already found out what what the trouble was, uh, and it's gonna be um, it's gonna be um, all right then. And thank you so much for the great time, guys. That was freaking amazing. But it was a quite um, it was a new experience because you know when you're doing uh, live streams, it is kind of you know um, uh, sh speaking into uh, the great wide open. Of course, there is a feedback uh, due to the live chat but it was really a very different experience actually seeing you guys on screen and being able to have a real-time conversation i really enjoyed this um and i'm i'm still processing um because uh that is really next level of um of studying magic together and you guys already in discord um we're talking about sharing great ideas about how to progress as a community in the future i'm all in i'm super excited about that so thank you so much um, for your engagement uh, this means the world to me it's it's really fun it's a great year so far uh, um, when it comes uh, uh, to what we're doing here uh, on youtube as a community studying card magic together this is really great and also on discord um let me show you this here um where is the discord um cheer up that is first recording of a trick i linked like all relevant links you will find this link in the info cards and uh in the info box uh, down below a uh, very nice um uh, uh, performance of a very lovely trick a um double flash royal flash uh um prediction so to say uh she rub is um, presenting this year or performing this year uh a, a, an interaction with his uh, uh daughter i guess um Wonderful to watch. It's in German, but it really doesn't matter. It's the first recording of the guy. It's up there, uh, public on YouTube. So watch it. Hit a like. Leave a nice comment. Get, get some get some good vibes out there to the man. Um, uh, he deserves as well. Probably or maybe after going into the text today, um, uh, we, we why not? I was thinking why not uh, talk a little bit about the trick and trying to um yeah you know um. Um, uh, use what we learned today or try to adapt what we learned today to this very little nice trick so, um, um, if, if we can make it in time so let's go back to the comments here and see is what let's see what you guys are up to and this is becoming oh, wow. um, <laughs> a running gag and I still have the meme here um, uh, which I didn't want to play actually right now but you know here we go um, so um, uh, Judge Gabriel Eget writes, I just have a quick question. What is your favorite control? Um, well, we're going to talk about, uh, uh, we're going to talk about um, uh, what is, uh, f you know, here, with f just relying on what I just read a couple of minutes ago, um, it really doesn't matter what my favorite is, dude. It, 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 it is what works in certain circumstances for me as a performer, um, even though if that is not my favorite one. <laughs> Got you there. Um, but I am, um, I'm really, I'm, I'm, I'm a huge fan of um, all kinds of uh, uh, techniques uh, that are variations of a diagonal palm shift. It's a very powerful technique. Uh, it comes very in, it comes in very handy for advanced palming techniques, and it's uh, some dope stuff um, uh, which I'm um, working on. Um, Chirap says it was great at maniacs. Yeah, it was, it was a great session. I really enjoyed that. Um, okay, guys. Um, presentation right so we have this we have when we study magic um as beginners and even as intermediates and if you study in the modern times where um camera work is super essential we are really focused on our hands am i right and uh, we're practicing a lot of slides and especially as a beginner there is kind of a you know what i'm always saying a foundation to lay um and i'm sorry the music was a little bit loud i hope you couldn't hear me i turned it down a little bit and you know there there is some techniques you have to you have to um, practice, uh, and then there are tricks you start working on, and you're always kind of in this mindset of um, uh, looking at your hands, you know, um, 
looking at a trick, analyzing it, trying trying to work it out, um, hardly ever thinking about the perspective of your onlookers. And now the whole chapter, and maybe that that's the angle I want to give it, is um, for us to um, to give the perspective of the audience, the onlookers' perspective. Um, more room, more importance, um, more priority, and trying to um, to remember or to imagine what it is they are actually seeing, um, which is a very important tool or technique um, in order to routine your magic, uh, which is also a little um, um, note here in, in this very chapter, um, presentation of magic, right? Now, this chapter totally fits in where we are at with our with our little um, walkthrough here um, of last year the Royal Road to Card Magic and this year Expert Card Technique, because at a certain point, of course, um, you want to go out and also, of course, you need to go out and um, perform your magic, you know, give it a try, give it a shot, how it's actually working, what you have been practicing or working on for so long. And um, hearts crossed, um, we all need more performance or performing experience. Um, I'm the first to say it, I should be out there performing magic so much more often than I, I do, right? And this is the first thing also who got Embroy point out pretty clearly, and I'm gonna read this in a second. It's like this is just something you gotta you gotta do. You gotta go out there and uh, at practices. It's we have the guidance, but the experience you cannot you, you you just gain it by doing it. And this kind maybe a hard pill to swallow, um, but it's the first thing really to to grasp and to hold in this chapter because every every other you know tip or um, guidance they are giving is, is basically in, re in relation to that. It's all, um, it's now all, we are now in, we are now in the situation of actually performing magic, um, uh, pretty much in a close-up setting um, as card guys, right? Um, so once again, if you are um, a beginner or even an intermediate um, uh, who, who has not got um, um, a lot of um, experience performing, do not um, do not be over overwhelmed with this, or don't let this frighten you. Right? Um, all of this comes, I, I would say, naturally if you just you know um, follow some simple guidelines, um, and and that's that's that's. That's just that's just true, and of course it takes time. It's not something you read and then you go out and and you give it a, a couple of tries and you're done with it. This is work in progress. This is something now where we um, um, embed or start embedding our experience, um, performing our tricks, our routines into the next um, stage of progressing with what we're doing. Hopefully. Um, uh, becoming masters of the art. A mega Hulk, Hulk, Hogan, Hulk, Hulk Hogan fan. <laughs> Hulk, Hulk, Hulk Hogan fan. Where are you from, Sweden? <laughs> mega Hulk Hogan fan. Really appreciate the streams. Good, sir. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, remember the good old Hulk Hogan with the ultimate warrior. Um, ah, good old times. <laughs> That's right. Apply some pressure. Apply some pressure. So um, let, uh, let let's on, and another thing. I may, may, another thing I forgot to mention um, because um, it was um, Dallas Taylor, one of uh, one of the art maniacs, uh, also very active on, on Discord. He you know it, where, where did he put it? He would um, he would. Um, link um, section 8 of book 4 of Aristotle's Nicomachean Ethics. So he was throwing um, ancient Greek philosophy into the game. <laughs> also, I linked um, 
a little crash course uh, for this, uh, virtue, for this uh, ancient Greek um, virtue theory um, in the info cards as well as in the info box. And as a matter of fact, um, as Dallas Taylor points out, this might be a very um, fitting to today's um, um, topic, um, presentation and magic. Uh, now I don't know if if I'm if I managed to get into the t into this text, but you will find the text here as a little uh, download PDF uh, in our uh, on our Discord channel. It's down below in uh, in the info box, and um, uh, with um, Aristotle's um, virtue theory, um, let's let's put it like this. You know, it's all about living the most virtuous life to um to live a fulfilling and a happy life and a good and a happy life is a life that is uh, proper in the sense of um uh, balancing out proper um interaction or proper action to certain problems of life right um so in this uh Ancient Greek uh, philosophy uh, of Aristotle, a, um, a right life or a good life is a life that functions according to the actual goal of, of that comes by nature, so to say. And if you translate this, I, I'm making a huge, you know, bending this immensely here, you know, translate this to magic. Um, we are good magicians, we are virtuous magicians, if we um, succeed in the, in the function, in the job we are attempting, and that is to entertain an audience, right? <laughs> and of course, you cannot entertain an audience if you suck as presentation, uh, as, a, as a presenter of the art form, right? Yeah, I know this is this is quite bending, the stretching this year. But since uh, um, Dallas Taylor threw this into the mix, I thought, you know, I uh, I try to I try to uh, bring it up here. Very lovely. And so also you find this uh, little um, this little um, crash course on um, virtue theory by Aristotle. It's a really a nice watch of a pretty famous. Uh, uh, YouTuber, I believe, also I've seen 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 him um, uh, uh, once in a while. Um, it's worth it's worth a watch, right? Uh, because that stuff, if it's um, if it's uh, 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 put eloquently, uh, easy easily to digest, uh, it's it's really quite interesting. You know, you don't have to break your head um, uh, ab uh, about it, above it, through it. I don't know because of it. Anyway. Let's go to the car table. Let's let's go to no, not go to to a car, to a car table. Let's go to the to the uh, to the book here. Um, and let's let's just let me read the 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 first paragraphs here. You guys get yourself your deck of cards out and you practice what it is you're practicing right now. Oh man, I have the music too loud on my headphones. So. Mastery of the technique which makes his feats possible is an absolute essential to the card conjurer, but it is not enough to make him a successful entertainer. Much as a jeweler mounts a diamond to bring out all the beauty of the stone, the conjurer must present his feats in the most entertaining manner of which he is capable. It is not enough merely to stand before an audience and do a card trick, no matter how great the technical expert what Expertness, expertness, expertise, the technical expertness the enter uh, is. The entertainer must employ all the tricks of the theater to win for himself the approval of those present. He must, the, em the entertainer must employ all the tricks of the theater to win for himself the approval of those present. Right, we, we, we do, like immediately we're stepping up the game here. Um, the tricks of the theater. So we are actually um, now entering the realm of um, um, acting. 
right? Like theater actors. Oh, right. I have no idea what this is all about. I, 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 I don't know. So, you know, and, um, uh, but when you think about it, 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 it just makes sense. It is not the purpose of this book to expound the principles of presentation, which after all are best learned through experience. Yet since good stagecraft is such a large part of the successful presentation of card magic, it may not be inadvisable to point out some of the methods used by experienced artists in presenting their feats. So what? So we, uh, here, um, Hugard and Brouet are pretty constant uh, or sh uh, show or display uh, uh, consistency in their technical approach. The whole book is very technical for the most of it. Um, we are we are giving some uh, main building blocks for great stage um, performance, or uh, better to say, for um, w what's this beautiful word here? The stagecraft. The stagecraft presenting card magic. The presentation of magic. It would be less than prudent to claim that the reader here will find infallible rules and regulations which will enable him overnight to become one of the greatest of magic. Unfortunately, There is no magic road to success unless it be hard work and bitter experience. Okay, guys, let that sink in for a moment. There is no way around growing in the art form at this point. Unfortunately, it is hard work and bitter experience. <laughs> And we talked about this a little bit in the in the um, exclusive stream that uh, teaching an art form, um, especially today, might not be very sexy, especially when uh, you need to um, first uh, um, confront yourself with the uh, with the uh, with the classical elements of the art form, you know. Everybody wants, you know, to uh, to go directly to the end. But uh, when it comes to um, performing arts, you, that that that's just not possible. Yes, there is a market out there where um, uh, people are shaped as products and they're put out there and they 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 burn out, they sell out. You know, I don't know. Um, since the invention of boy groups even before that the industry is just you know burning artists burning artists burning artists and few kept on the track you know few kept building up their their um their um, um, reputation as artists really growing as artists or for example like the rolling stones n not really developing at all but you know um selling the same deal that's what we do and we don't want to change and that's all right and they're still doing it up until today which is an insane when i think about it but it's a different story very different story so it is not sexy right You're not going to take get your deck of cards. You're not going to learn the latest slides. Or you're not going to buy the the newest stuff and um, um, half-heartedly, you know, put this uh, uh, on your fingers in your hands, and then you go out there and you're going to be you're going to be rocking awesome. That's not how it works. That is not how it works, right? It is hard work, and um, it is bitter experience because, of course, you 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 will um, fail um, eventually. When you give it a try, but that's not a problem because um, um, nobody gets killed, uh, nobody gets hurt. Maybe you just be, feel embarrassed a little bit, but it doesn't matter because you learn from this. And at the point where you succeed, which also happens um, quite frequently, um, uh, it's going to be a blast. It's going to be freaking amazing, right? Uh, and that's what we're all in for. Um, anyway, I just, this is like, You know, I've been saying it all the time. Everybody who's serious about it, everybody who's not um, uh, selling um, uh, false promises and um, uh, kind of prophecies or something, um, that is the real deal, right? Um, and it's okay because that's just that's just how it works. Now, 
they go on because they know how harsh they were here, right? Unfortunately, there is no magic road to success unless it be hard work and bitter experience. But you are a magician. You are a magician. And you love magic. And lacking experience, you are floundering about in all directions and you are getting a little discouraged. You present magic but not very well and you don't know what is wrong. <laughs> Yet tell yourself that what you need is a new trick, something very new and amazing and impossible. But when you get this trick, you are just where you were before and you decide that what you need is another new trick, also very amazing and impossible. And you don't know what is wrong. <laughs> that was 1940, right? And it got worse from there because now it's a complete market that lives, that profits off from that, from that, um, uh, down spiral <laughs> it does not need to be a down spiral necessarily but it's a huge it's a huge break uh, when you want to progress steadily in an uh, in an um, in a realistic manner in a realistic fashion depending on how much effort and time you put in there <laughs> so don't fall into that trap by just another trick putting another trick on, which is more, much even better and more amazing than the other ones you never really learned and you never tested out out there, right? <laughs> I love this, 1940, can you believe this? It is, it is so true and it's, it, it, it's even today, even more today, right? It is to you that these words are addressed and not to those others who have already learned from experience that which we hope to say here. We want to tell you about some very fine magicians and what they did and why they became famous, right? And then so on and so on. They became famous because they uh, knew how to present magic, of course. But w what is the secret of, uh, of good presentation? And here's the first key they're hitting us with. They knew how to present themselves in an act of magic. And I am um, added here, uh, playing uh, slash acting the role of being a magician. And it is really true that they um, say this a little bit later. They use um, the word play also here. Herman, Howard Thurston, Max Melini, and currently Blackstone, Cardini and Dante, international celebrities, all of whom played the suave and personal wizard of storybook tradition. Now, at, at this point here, they already introduce uh, different types of characters that can be played. But remember the all the tricks of the theater we need to um, we need to pull in order to to present our magic. Rocking awesome, right? We are playing a role. We are playing the role of a magician. And here comes the 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 uh, the, the crack about it, which I want to add. It is not only, and this is the highest level um, of the um, the performance situation um, that the role play you are presenting is transparent within the act, right? It's not just that um, uh, you, they, they, uh, on a very common level, it's there is a magician and the magician comes and does all the magician things, right? But the intimate, powerful performance of magic is, the, is a role play of um, playing the role of a magician and everybody knows it just like they know an actor is playing a role in a in a movie right um like um everybody knows that uh, joking phoenix is not the joker and everybody is intrigued about an, a stunning performance like this um like any great actors who are able to uh, impersonate to em embody uh, not only um a person or a, a very um, uh, emotional, you know, different being, but also a development of that character, of that being. Like this is, it's always stunning to me. And just in that manner, when people view, view you like that, um, you become the artist that I at least um, um, 
see as the final goal of the whole journey, right? And this is uh, this is this is this is, this is kind, of, kind of the premise. This is the this is the goal. This is uh, the to bring back the Greek Greek philosophy here. This is the eudoma eu what is it called? Eu um, eudaimonia, the eudaimonia of eudaimonia, eudaimonia. That's that's how you pronounce it, I believe, in English. Of of uh, the art of magic. Now. Who that is, the, what the role, how the role actually looks like, you're you, you're going to play. Um, that is that is your quest, <laughs> basically. It and I I view as view it as a quest. You see now at this point here. We, this is I'm just I didn't even really go into in, into any of of it here furthermore. This is um, this is far beyond just learning some slides some techniques um, and using them to um, learn some tricks to perform some tricks then to um, build a little routine with the trick right um, but of course all of those steps kind of are the, are the path are the way to uh, to this um, um, sophisticated um, role play whatever it is you know um, and this is this is um, an as an aspect of, of magic, of the art form. Um, I am I am just barely touching myself, right? Um, but I believe this is the greatest fun part. It's like who who am I gonna be as um uh, really as the magician? And you you already see certain tendencies there, right? Um, so because um when we keep on reading. Let me just here keep on reading a little bit. After a great deal of hard work. Now well, let, let's go down here. Eudaimonia. That's by the way is the um this uh, this video I've got linked in the info info cards as well as in the info box. This little crash course. It's uh, uh it's it's a crazy word. <laughs> uh, anyway. Oh, this is going to be a crazy session. This is not going to be for everybody. Um, but um, I'm enjoying myself right now already, getting into this a little bit. Um, once again, this this is not a... Um, here, there, nothing is, uh, as you as you might uh, recognize, nothing is scripted at all or something. It's just a kind of, you know, uh, a very jazzy, um, brainstormy uh, mood I'm in. Um, just like trying to get this, the, the, you know, getting the most out of the text, bringing this to life. Um, because sometimes, you know, you practice for so long and you try and you try and you try and you just, you know, it's really good to know what what what, what the end game is, you're, you know? After a great deal of hard work and thought they learned that there are three kinds of magicians okay i don't like to send at all because um now we have these three kinds of magicians but um this is now the authors um kind of um trying to um uh, uh, um zoom out or uh, pick out um some uh, stereotypes or archetypes of of, of um uh, uh, uh of the magic character that can that can be played and with cards of course there is this this card gambling type of guy there is uh, the wizard um uh, I'm a wizardy magician um uh, uh, and um and those as the big blocks a lot of in between as possible let's see how they put it here um there is the conjurer who possesses the knack of creating spontaneous laughter laughter there is the wizard who is a mystic and who presents his feats in a more or less serious manner implying that he has strange powers and there is the magician who is a light-hearted and friendly fellow who somehow contrives to create the impression that his feats are the results of intellectual thimble rigging that his uh, deceptions are successful because he thinks just a little faster than his audience. If you are one of the first group, you will hardly be reading this chapter, for such men are the blessed of the gods, and you will know it is a, it, um, and you will know it as 
surely as you know that the sun rises in the east for this is a talent which cannot be concealed nothing will stop such a man from being what he is an amusing saney like the great odd marius <laughs> uh yeah uh, uh, this is actually um um also not true i believe that you can have a character trait that makes it a little bit easier for yourself to um you know to chit chat with people um but when you picture the whole work of routining um you will um um you will be able to to create a um a space for yourself to um chit chat and to talk with your audience anyway and since the structure of your routine will give you um uh Uh, will give you confidence in 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 the in the in the walkthrough of the situation with your with the interaction with your audience and by practicing this by simply doing this you will become more and more conf confident about it um over time so um do not i i wouldn't um trade uh, or, or value um talent too high but of course um uh, if um if you like uh, more a um, relaxed Uh, come uh, open person uh, that 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 easily you know gets into a, a into a chit chat with, with with a stranger um um might you know um might just naturally drift into a more um more spontaneous more funny performance style than let's say a more shy introverted character right um and um Now and then they um and from from there it is really kind of um that situation where you start I I would say developing um uh what what's the best what, what's what's the most comfortable uh th thing for you to do at first um trying to um to play out your strengths you know and kind of work with your weaknesses you know work around your weaknesses probably um but no matter what you do and i guess this is what hugard and Bruy are um hitting on here is do not try to be some somebody else of course you will be inspired by um uh, one or another magician and then you kind of you know uh, f um try to um to do it like they do it And that's okay for a um, certain degree, because h how else would you get uh, really get getting started? This is your inspiration. But if you would just stay in copying them, you would lose all the potential that lies within you. You know, all all what could be original about your presentation of magic would never see the uh, the light of the world. Um, so. At some point, you have to look into the mirror, and this is um, another um, thing. Who got and Bray point out here? You got to be critical, um, self-critical about what you do, not only in behalf of you know uh, misjudging your own uh, skills, um, but in behalf of um, realizing what what it is you're presenting um, and how you can shape this um in order to make this uh, an, uh, make this character interesting um funny mysterious or whatever it is right but if you in presenting your magic are always casting a oh, right don't really secondly there is the wizard who cloaks his mysteries in pseudo shroud of impenetrable darkness um I would I would say there's this uh, this wizard type is the one who um, really goes um, uh, into this uh, uh, almost uh, uh, mentalism type of magic, which is really popular in in this um, uh, modern times, like kind of a pseudo scientific style of um, vague explanations of some things nobody really knows, and then uh, you can make people freeze or you can read their mind and so on. 
And um, of course, this is a whole other setup, a whole other style. Um, and I believe you will not find this um, very often in a straightforward, um, spontaneous close-up setting, which is um, maybe what we are confronted with uh, in the first, uh, uh, f at, at first, for the most of it. Right, because this is where you where you get where do you get your experience? You're, we're not professionals. We're not um, uh, uh, getting into this uh, world of g getting gigs booked and s s uh, um, uh, something. We just want to go out performing, and then you try it at a party of a friend, or you try it. Um, you're out with friends maybe you tried there with strangers and maybe you're you're courageous enough you you you, you already gained some experience and then you try to get a, a gig you know uh, in, in, a, in a bar somewhere or something like this right and um and all these situations they are really much uh, much closer to to this spontaneous uh, jazzy performance type of style where you wouldn't you know play it the magic of you know um so the the most popular popular type is the um probably the the light-hearted and friendly fellow right yeah there's this beautiful sentence here in the book where they say Uh, Joseph uh, Dunninger apparently is the only uh, present-day conjurer who can say take a card and still convince the spectators that fairies and goblins perch on his shoulders. <laughs> hey, this is, uh, is very funny. If you're not this type of a magician either, then you will undoubtedly adapt yourself very nicely to the re remaining style and a very good style it is this is magic presented in the urban good humored manner with the tongue in the cheek right this type of performer has enjoyed a steady popularity of decades names 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 and they all played the suave and personal wizard of storybook tradition They give in examples like Rossini too is a master of the situation character type of humor. It is tonic to watch him nibbling or a forefinger as he inquires nib nebulously if the spectator is absolutely positive that the card is not his. To watch the magnificently comical manner in which with a shrug he passes off the failure as a matter of no importance and a moment later discovers the missing card in his hand you know um comes to mind this um uh, and you also i believe you find it on um on youtube a cadini presentation where he the, the, the cigarette um uh thing where he tries to you know um, get get uh, to get rid of a cigarette and it always reappears and it's just like oh my god like almost slapstick style uh, uh presentation Or Charlie Chaplin, and of course this is um uh, and this is also something that is um kind of uh kind of notable. Um, of course we are here in the 1940s, right? So um when so the idea of Chaplin comes up like this slapstick kind of um uh, uh character um i guess that was pretty famous um uh, that time and an audience was used to that kind of humor in the cinemas in uh in a theater and um so um uh, magicians would basically mm, catch up uh, on w with what was uh, trendy by the time um w w which is perfectly reasonable isn't it So uh, music is out again here. Turning this back on again. Now I haven't been talking a lot about. Um, uh, I have been. Um, let's let's sum this up here a little bit. What what I read so far. So we we are, we are playing the role of a magician, right? And there are uh, different um, character uh, characters you can play. Um, Uh, some archetypes you can uh, identify and um, then um, it's a, it's a good um, um, 
guidance to um, to build this character uh, um, on 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 your um, character traits, right? On your on your uh, uh, own character traits uh, to make this work best and easy. Um, No, this is so. I find out this. Uh, um, this this uh, chapter is so packed, man. I got to check this out. I got so much here in it. It's like you got to. You just got to read it. It's super rich. You know. I'm just right at this point. I'm just like picking the stuff I, I can remember. Trying to put this in some kind of reasonable order. Now Dennis Taylor comes in out. Yeah, oh, hey all. Apologize for throwing up light. No worries. Um. I've just I've already tried to embed. You gotta watch this later. Um, you're um uh here. Um, I total into the br bring it into the mix. You know, uh, trying to figure out what um, eudaimonia um, would mean for the magician. Of course, to um, entertain the audience always and forever. You know, um, working very hard every freaking day to become the best magician you can be, and of course to be. Um, uh, as witty as as witty as possible, fitting to the certain perf performance character you are developing on your uh, journey to be become a master of the art, and of course to be balanced, uh, not to go into extremes um, with your um, character traits, uh, but to balance them out in order to um, uh, to present great magic for your audience summing it up all up just for you dallas taylor thank you so much for this um uh, feedback on discord rocking awesome man now arjun nair is in the house probably for the first time i'm seeing you in chat at least right i showed up late as well don't worry everything's nice guys you're you're in the house let's see how much how, how, how many uh, uh, people are watching eight people i i, I we don't have, we're not gonna have a, a huge uh, viewer peak here but i don't care because um uh this is anyway kind of a, a special topic and um, who who is ready to discover it will discover it one or another way because it is on the way it is necessary there is no way around it basically but it's another chamber it's another it's um it's another we know we're now upping upping the game you know we're leveling leveling up you know this is not uh it's not if we are out of kindergarten we are out of grundschule we are out of um uh, l'école you know uh, this is university and um this is um kind of uh, introduction of the uh, the basic principles of uh, presenting magic as a performer and um and it's it, it's just the beginning <laughs> it is amazing i'm excited about it So let me, um, let me maybe try this. Uh, to read this one here to to, let, to to get a little bit more an idea of what this character role play we're now confronted with is all about. It is impossible for the for the magician, in the brief time, at his disposal, to create so fully rounded a character a character as this. Um, so now, complex character, right? Um, that, that that we have been just you know drawing the the, the rough lines here. Um, yet by short stop strokes he can outline the character he's playing sufficiently to give background depth to the salient character traits precisely as Cardini by extra accentuating. by accentuating character traits of ennui and eccentricity provides a perfect background for the production of objects which apparently harass and annoy him right that, that's just what I was talking about um, and this is some um, this is a good. Uh, this is really this. Uh, this Cardini uh, character is just like we're still in the. This is uh, this is a silent act. You know, it's a, a mime act basically, um, with magic illusions of of objects just uh, popping out of n n nowhere, harassing harassing him, and he outs outlines with character strokes, um, with slap in a slapstick performance the the, the the character that you know vibrates in the background. That's 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 where we at now. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Um, 
Um, this type of humor is more a creative humor than any other. It is the result of the constant building of a character, of placing the character in a situation to which he reacts in a believable manner. It is the type of intellectual horseplay which never grows old. So just from there, um, when you're building your routines, or uh, the character you play becomes a, um, be becomes a say in the build of your routines at a certain point, right? It is not an easy humor to master, not nearly so easy as mes me uh, mesmerizing a few jokes and clever sayings and dropping these into your monologues. But it is much safer humor for the longer you live with the character you are creating. The more real the character becomes, very much like interests compounding in a bank, right? So this is something you build up over time. Um, it's not coming from day, from day one. And of course, when you start with your first routines, you got your lines, maybe you borrow them, maybe you create your own ones, you give them a try, and then you work, start working with this. You know, this is, um, this is, um, this is uh, crazy. We, we all need to perform much more, man. I'm just realizing this. I need to, I need to, I, I'm reading too much. <laughs> I'm live streaming too much. So, and then once again, it's com completely up to you what you choose. Um, it is most, in most instance, instances, the character created is an um, accented and a dramatized version of the performer's own character, right? As just a, as a hint to go for. Thurston built his character around a man very similar to the old country doctor who was everyone's friend and whose heart was of gold. He managed to surprising extent to a surprising extent to make each spectator feel that this homie, comfortable looking hanky panky man <laughs> was addressing him personally. <laughs> A comfortable looking hanky panky man. <laughs> Dude, this is something. I'm 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 telling you, I'm picking this I'm taking these words out to you to build lines because this is this is um with a German accent accent for an English speaking audience, you come up with words like this. This this, this I believe this works. May I introduce myself as a comfortable looking hanky panky man, which I truly am. <laughs> May you pick a card, please. <laughs> I love this word. I don't even know what, what does it mean? What does it mean? Anyway. Well, so you get the idea, right? So we, we, we are in, um, we are in for, um, for quite some time, I believe, 45 minutes, and we just, you know, we just been talking about characters here. Um, on page, I'm here currently on page 433. Right, and then it's just like to point this out that the um that this character is really important this this role play um the th uh, the the tricks of the theater they are they are they, they, they play um at least an equal if not uh, a stronger role in the build of your reputation in the effect of your magic in the in, in, in the uh, experience of the audience, the emotional attachment, the emotional uh, journey they are going through. Um, so um, also here, I think it's a great realization to see that the illusions, uh, besides the methods you use, besides the, the effects you choose, the illusions, they are just merely a tool themselves, um, which we use um, in the specific theatrical play we are creating right um which which is what brings entertainment and and joy and wonder and amusement to the people right
Well, and then they finish this chapter here with uh, with not many ma ma many ma rise to great heights. But you, who may be one of those, must now inspect yourself to decide as an actor the role you will play. As an actor, the role you will play, and then, like an actor, rehearse the role over and over again building the character in word and action until it becomes an unforgettable reality. It will be difficult, but it will be worth the effort if you are one of the chosen few. I mean, this is extremely dramatically put, because depending on what your goal is, you know, um, that is absolutely um, uh, bollocks, you know, you, you, but still, um, just picking out a few of those elements we just read if you just want to you know occasionally as a hobbyist want to perform some tricks you know uh, you'd be good to go but if you um i kind of you know um want to really walk the walk the long road you know walk the, walk the journey all the way uh, if this is your thing and, and it not even Uh, necessarily becoming a professional but becoming a master of the art this is the this is the, the, the this is the secret basically of magic <laughs> right here revealed on YouTube on public domain on 1940 uh, expert car technique you know now yeah now let's let's uh, make a little way break a little um, moment of uh, letting that sinking in and then I'm gonna rush through the rest of the, of, of the chapter of, um, um, but don't you worry we will come back to this we will have to come back to this anyway because as we've learned at pretty much at the beginning of the live stream this ain't something that we just you know read once or twice or even three times and then we give it a couple of tries and then we're done with it this is gonna stay with us this all this is kind of this is the mount everest this is the or not the, the mount everest because today they um they have the rich people have themselves been carried up to the mount everest i, I read this the other is like oh, that's crazy because then you can say you can eat sit with your skin so <laughs> I'm losing my shit again, and you you can sit with the with your rich friends over dinner. You know, you go like, mm. I had some poor working class folk from a different country, um, carry me up to the Mount Everest. I'm a really freaking um adventurer now. <laughs> So not the Mount Everest because you cannot, you, you nobody carries you up this hill, right? You gotta walk this your own. Let's let's go to the car table here. Let's go to the car table here. The other day, Chi Rob would uh, perform a little tricks using two decks. Now. Making his life maybe a little bit too difficult. I just, I'm not, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna really. I try to to reproduce the effect here, and I'm gonna point out the the most uh, the most difficult moments here. Now the f that's right there, a beautiful setup, which I love about the trick because we got two decks, right? So we got here choices. We can inter, we can integrate the audience. Inter, you can we, we can play with our audience immediately, and if you watch She Rob's performance, you will find that that um, that um, he's uh, actually doing this with his uh, 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 daughter, um, and it works wonderful. And by the way, this is uh, written somewhere here. Um, that is um, The audience committee, whenever possible, in routining a trick, make use of as many persons from the audience as possible. Okay, we got another ch check here in the chapter. You know, get the, to get your um, to get your um, audiences in involved in uh, in in your presentations. That really helps a lot to um, to um, to create an experience that is um, special. Because they, now they're taking part in the magic, right? It's something very wonderful. And the next tip here right now, redneck plots of tricks. Very simple put here. There are plots that worked over time and they, they all share the same 
um, ingredient and that is simplicity that is easy to follow when you build your routines when you choose your tricks especially as a beginner do not make them do not overthink stuff do not make them too complicated um, easy tricks easy to follow the card moves from one place to another card changes or, 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 or um um, the effect is really clear, um, like in, 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 in this situation here, in this red little trick. So, um, the first thing we got, of course, we have, um, um, we have two decks we need to establish um, as fairly shuffled, right? So, you, you, so, I just pick one out here, right there out of the box, and I just give them one decent shuffle, as maybe I would um, give a, 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 another spectator just the other box, have them hold the other box, and whatever, and then I just cut them one time on the table, and let me see if that worked, because that was a weird shuffle. Uh, I got it all where I want to have it, right? Now, this is what you wouldn't want to do, but you get one card shuffled. And here, the first thing in the trick, do you shuffle them separately, and you work now with the cards or do you just shuffle them you know in it is the shuffling one thing that you use anyways you need to establish shuffle deck and i just shuffle that cards just the same way um give them one decent overhand shuffle because she rob um did um go for two overhand shuffles um at the f with the first one it's fair enough but um just the the, the good old tip uh, depending on your skill level, make it easy for yourself. It's super relaxed. It's completely enough. Now we got established. We got two shuffle decks, uh, two decks, um, uh, two, 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 two decks uh, shuffled and cut. Now here's the thing. Um, I don't know the the the, uh, the 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 pattern of this trick at all, and um, it, uh, I believe it goes into the direction of. Um, of some kind of gambling uh, thing, um, you have another problem that um, not all spectators know um, the, um, the, the, uh, the, the the ranks of poker hands, right? Get the card here. This is something maybe where you could, just a little performance tip also, um, you're, in, you're in a situation now, you have to explain for the effect what's the highest um, rank, and that of course is a royal flush, right? And um, and this is also not original, but you can you could produce here one of those uh, cards. You find them ga games that explain this thing here, right? You could produce one of those to um, in a magical fashion out of one of those decks, um, and then you you got your decks established. The shuffling is long forgotten, and you um, you explain we got a um, straight flush. This would be um, uh, here uh, the example here is four of hearts to the to the eight of hearts. It's the same suit, and the values are um, chronical. And um, this only is beaten by a royal flush, which goes from the ten to the ace in one suit. And this is the, always the winning hand in poker. And it is crazy if uh, there has been there are legends. You know, and now I'm going into this, um, <clears throat> into this, uh, I'm not going to touch, I don't, I'm not going to touch the cards, but just, you know, this is the good, the good, good old, um, uh, not going to touch the cards, leave the hands open here. Um, uh, once again, into, um, uh, into the, talking about presentation, the trick, the effect is one thing, the, uh, the, the, um, the build, the design of the trick, what you got to walk through is, is another thing, but the presentation is another one. And then we have on a, on a surface, next surface level, of course, the pattern or the narrative. What are we talking about, actually? What is the story they do? And then the character who's telling the story. Right, and you know me, you Ot Marius. I'm a little bit of a crazy, confused German guy. Um, uh, I'm I'm not really. I'm I'm a kind of a charming character. I'm a charming dude. I'm I'm, I'm also fr you trust me, but 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 also, mm, this guy's also come, comes around strange sometimes, you know, um, and um, um, like like right now, <laughs> and um. So it's a character, it's a narrative, it's the plot, um, or it's the build of the trick, and then it's the slides or the techniques, the methods you're using, like on, the, on, the, on, like maybe on the, on the, on the scale. And for, 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 uh, for, for layman, all of, none of this does exist, right? So, um, so we are here with the card thing, and then yeah, you could go 
with, with something with with with, with not with the karting, we are with the with the, with the um, well with the, with the rules of poker, right? Um, and you have can many can go from many directions here. I would go for something like it's like there are there are legend. I, I've heard about stories. A friend of mine actually is a professional poker player. He plays every day three times three games minimum. That's the minimum you got to play. You know, I'm just overdosing here uh, just for uh, uh, reasons to exemplify um, and, and and he has never seen a royal flush because the probability of royal flush is extremely low it's to, it's a low probability right and you that's what you what i would go for because that's it's you know that's what you really got to stretch in a in a in a in a way that suits your character right for this example and you go like for example i'm, I'm just dealing with myself one a poker hand right I'm dealing myself a poker hand. That would be five cards right here in the example. Get the five cards here, right? And you know, in a poker game, and now I'm just chessing around with this, you have the you, you have the cards mixing up all the time and changing. It's it's you know, the probability is insane. It's completely it's like a, a whole universe that uh, evolves uh, it evolves. It's evolution of 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 madness. It's but it's uh, you got to be very focused on everything. And I try to sim simulate this here right now. So I'm just going to deal cards right, and they go down on the table. I shuffle card completely random, and uh, at any time anybody just stops me at any point in there right there. So that let's mark this point we keep on doing this the game goes on you know and then there somebody say stop the game goes on and the game and whatever you you just say this people stop you and then you end up in uh, there right there okay we got this one here and if some more we I did some more stop right there or, or okay there right there so and now we are in this situation the cards get all mixed up together all the time in a game of poker and the, the cards they will be they will they will always you know go from hand to hand and return and return now now and, and you got also burn through cards i forgot this now right that even that comes to to there thank you very much for the interaction here because this is what what might happen when you tell a story something like this um uh, uh but you forgot to burn the cards they also burn the cards right they even burn the cards right like literally or what you know go with it be witty about it anyway so and then you go and then you end up with the result where you have these 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 uh, matching cards here at the end right I get the matching cards out of the deck um and and with all the the the, the probability that is going on right yeah all the probability that is going on those cards can be nothing but random chaos right but still it is me who is holding pretty much the highest card uh, the highest hand in the in the game right because i control chaos it is a neat royal flight three four five six seven bang done Give me your money, everybody. And then, depending on how you play it, have some other... Turn the cards around, and I... I won the game! <laughs> yeah. So, here's the next tip we learn in the book. When something goes wrong, ignore it. Never play yourself down. You know, never apologize. We learn this in this book, right? It's very good to see things go wrong and you can, might also get angry about it i'm looking here right now i'm trying to figure out where they say this that you should never because it's in the it's 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 in the chapter here Yeah, here it is, I said. So, um, now th there's an another tip here that they're giving. Um, this is about um, you yourself. Um, where you, um, where this basically is that, that um, it would, I would translate like this in the, within the role you're playing, the part that is you, um, and, um, that transports or transport or transmitters transmits 
all the magic um you got to stick to yourself you got to be true to yourself and you 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 um you um you uh, shall not downgrade yourself so never apologize that right and no matter what goes wrong or what you fear may go wrong audiences don't want apologies and they are not interested in your troubles if you drop palm cards don't apologize there is little you can say and you may only call attention to that which many failed to observe when the four aces turn out to be four indifferent cards don't explain that it couldn't or shouldn't have happened uh, people will understand and overlook such a uh, uh, con contra terms contra terms contra terms and will be with you if you pass over the matter lightly. If you apologize, they will be annoyed with you. Never disparage yourself and mean it. When you make what should be a clever remark and no one is amused, don't show that the attempt at wittiness has failed. Don't pause and wait for the laughter which does not come. Don't pluck at your clothes if you're nervous, straightening your tie or tugging at your coat. Which is like the camera is overheating. <laughs> uh, which um, which actually gave me the idea to um, overdo this at one point. Like maybe in a situation like this. Now, um, so of course, you, of course here in this trick, there's supposed to be a um uh a royal flush um on the other side so we got two uh, two flush here uh, a royal flush and the, the, the performer um uh gets out beaten by the audience everybody called stop it is um a very nice powerful trick which as you can see goes with little means just the overhand shuffle basically running a uh, top stock to the top right that's it and then one simple false cut Bang, you're done. You're set up for the whole trick. You have a lot of interaction with your audience. You know, you, you, you can have them choose which deck do you want to play with, which way, and you are going to play. Maybe you can play it with um, kind of a competition thing or so on. And you have a pattern and then um that comes out that's the result okay i i don't i had i don't have a royal flush here so i'm close but i don't have a royal flush so i don't apologize i i i just uh, uh, um uh, uh, uh so my natural instinct was going well aha i did win it i did i still did win it but that was close look that you know so i i would go for this pack it up and go to the next thing right um uh, but of course, also this needs practice because did you see what happened? I was, I had this moment where I was like, huh? Huh? <laughs> you know, just you just want to get out of the situation, but you can't get out of the situation, and and, and um, especially um, I as I see, I go, I go really into the into the um. As, as a character, I go really into the... Um, I'm almost forcing uh, 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 spectators to, to, to expect the craziest shit, right? So, the disappointment is really high. I, I, um, for, there's this the beautiful card trick um, by Aaron Fisher. It's, um, it's called Search and Destroy. It is um, a visual representation of the cards melting... Um, of two cards, two queens, visually melting to um, sandwich in the center of a, a table spread the spectator's, uh, spectator's card. And also the audience is involved in it. The, the cutting that leads to the, to the queens melting in is done by the spectators. Now this trick is brutal. It's brutal because it builds up such a high expectation. It did, by the way, it's one of it, it's one of my. It's really a f fabulous card trick. It builds up the expectation. It brings the audience uh, it, um, the, onto the table. They they take part on the magic um, uh, with, uh, with the magic. Then it has a visual effect that is happening super slowly, and it it creates a most impossible and stunning effect. Now, when you play it like me, because I like it like that, you know, I'm going just like, oh, I'm the, I'm the most excited person in the room about those two queens going in there, you know. And then, and it happened to me two, two or three times, 
it's not the chosen card sandwiched. The disappointment is so harsh. I I, di I didn't figure out a way to, to I, I didn't figure out a way to um to really solve this. But a, 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 a apology um is uh is never never a um a good good thing, right? It's never a good thing. Not at this point. So it's a lovely trick. And I um and um Chi Rob, thank you so much for sharing. Thank you so much for uh, for for performance for bringing this in. If if for what we learned so far um, on this uh, to this trick, make it as simple as possible. It is for your timeline. You already did this. You just um, did the um, uh, the overhand shuffle, right, with one deck, and then you um, you use a fancy card with the other deck, uh, um, which which was a little bit over over um, over your over the top for that, because the the card a card uh, can be. Um, uh, needs to be very easy of course i know you practice this you want to show it it's really great you're going to get there give it some time it comes to you i just let me just show the, the easiest cut the easiest and really that's the easiest and most powerful cut i use this here right this it's this sucker like this i use this with a swivel you can just do this with a swing cut right so you would with a swing cut you would um, do it like this bang it it completely works right it's the easiest uh, thing you can do and of course if you want to do it you know you give you get um where where where, where do i have my setup um if you want to do it um like that of course you can first bring the cards down right and i like the thinking and then just you know um bring them up again right but since you have to do this the same thing with this one here um and you're going to shuffle you're going to shuffle four times so once again, think about what your audience sees. Um, if you uh, shuffle both decks two times, you're shuffling four times. But uh, and then you, maybe uh, a card. So give it one shuffle, give it another shuffle. It's two shuffles plus two pl plus two cards, and um, you will create a satisfied situation for your audience um, that those cards are fairly mixed, right? And also you um, um, you. Uh, you do not you avoid the risk you know to 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 um to lose to lose the stock right when you shuffle them up again in the, in the, in the second round just just that kind of thinking it's not that, that that you did anything wrong or something it's just that um the more you the more you put on yourself the higher the risk to um to fail and i don't even know why i i couldn't even tell you where i just um uh, where i lost the the cut the, the, the stock maybe with the shuffle maybe with the cut i i don't know uh, quite honestly um and i'm fr i'm frankly i'm frankly really annoyed about, <laughs> about that <laughs> but anyways um so one shuffle two shuffle and and you cut them down one right and you know what I'm doing here, right? I'm, I'm just, um, I got the swivel cut um, tutorial also there. You find it there. You know, you swing cut them, you shuffle the top portion in your left hand. This brings automatically, I don't know why this cut is in this, automatically this portion to the top. That's what I like about it. So that's what we create. The top pa package goes to the bottom and you create a general cut, right? I love this. This is really good. It, it fools myself. Sometimes I fool myself with this, right? Bang, bang. Bang bang, and 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 then and then that that's that, and then the other thing I wanted just to point out with this trick, and I said what what the, the problem is here. So we end up in a situation where we have our um um doesn't matter now what cards the, the, does. So we we are in a situation, and then we have a bunch of cards dealt down onto the table, right? And we have them cards put on top of there right that's the thing what you die and now why the freaking and now here's this problem i create this picture this is a strong picture and now i'm picking this up again and and then i'm taking the cards out of course you know you you should you guys should know why that is if you think a little bit about it but why would you do that why the freak would the, would you do that in this situation now a, a layman wouldn't necessarily ask the question but in a way it is 
it's a problem because it's not natural. It's not it's it's not reasonable. There's no reason for this. The only reason, you know, the the reason points to the secret. So why so you you gotta give this a reason. Now that's a problem. That's really a problem. And it's a problem which fits very well to the chapter we're in, uh, presenting this trick. Because how you the, the, the way you you um you fix this problem um is uh, dependent on the character you're playing it's depend depending on your performance style and of course um it always goes into the direction of creating a misdirection that that and by misdirection here i mean to um without the spectator noticing taking the um attention away from the fact that those card stacks are now co collected i want to create a, a blind spot here and to be quite honest i did not rehearse this i spontaneously um in the story i i just improvised with the um, probability of the cards which is uh, super important and then it goes and then there was the sp uh, 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 audience interaction somebody's streaming and they burn the cards also where the guy knows how to play a poker right and in this moment I would say, and the cards they go round and go round, and they um they they are mixed up, they are picked up, they are shuffled, they've done everything. I wouldn't, I, I would try to you know um uh, uh, talk kind of in a sense over this, um so that and, and I would bring no attention to the fact that I'm picking up those packages, right? So this I guess is a natural thing, and it's kind of forget about it. it kind of almost the trick is almost done, right? And then and then uh, uh, maybe you come back to the theme of the probability, but not too long, right? And remember, ah, well, wait, you know, this is big because then we end up in the situation, right? And then I I discover the cards again because I just uh, subconsciously picked them up or something like that, and I could do this probably because my character. Um, uh, works with kind of a c c with 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 c c conf uh, confusion moments of completely getting lost you know that works for me um and and i can use this i can um uh and that's why i ask you uh chi rob um on your on uh, underneath in the comments um and i don't even know did you uh did you answer that no you didn't answer your comment. Um, um, it, where, where, where the sources, where you learned this trick from, and what they offer um, in the book to the novices of this trick, how to um, how to um, how to handle the situation, or do they just say pick up the packages and then deal out them cards? without um, bringing notice to the problem you are actually having there. And here's the thing. It is a fine trick. I believe it's a trick that works if you get about uh, um, over this hurdle. But if a spectator wonders, or if you are wondering about why you're picking up the cards at that moment, this will... Um, this might really uh, diminish or damage the um, the effect or the strength of the effect it could it, it could have. I believe this is also a tip we get here from Hugard and Bure in this chapter. Mm. I don't know um, where 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 this where I just lost my train of thought. Anyways, so 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 we've we've been through a lot today. Let's see where we're at. Um, about one hour fifteen minutes. Mm. So so um uh, uh cheer up right? No no I don't know. It was from YouTube, Mr. Trickster. Well well. Okay, so it doesn't matter. Um uh. But just as a just a, as a prime example for when you let when you learn a trick, and this is also once away the, the, the thinking the problem I, I I just pointed out here um, 
lies within the trick, in the design of the trick. And that is what a spectator sees. I, 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 when I learn a new trick, I always go to the side of the spectator and I, 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 I um, uh, look at it, what I see. And then I go back to the side of the magician and I say, okay, how do I have to build this so that this is a reasonable, exp reasonable experience, right? Um, would I give just, uh, uh, how do I reason the situation? Or maybe I don't have any problem with it at all. So I just leave it be and I give it a try like that. Does ev anybody ever call me out on this or not? But uh, it's important to see these obstacles in a trick, to see the, the, the moments that are kind of, you know, um, maybe problematic and then uh, 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 work with them. And of course, that is a huge part of um, the whole process of um, create something that is consumable um, uh, effectively, um, so to say, um, that um, creates an illusion, that creates um, uh, a, um, a bypass, as a moment of, you know, wonder with uh, how is that possible uh this question is like that's impossible i actually um but uh, but then and people tend to go back if if the trick is um uh, if the trick had this moment and then they even if they don't know exactly the secret they just assume they know it anyways right so so moments like that uh, to, to be spotted and then to to be worked around and it doesn't mean that the trick is um, bad or something So um, here we go. So let me see the comment. There is Tyler. I would just upload the video to YouTube as unlisted and then post the link uh, to Discord. Okay, you guys are. To I'm, I'm reading about this later. Like the, how how are we going to um, build the community further on and stuff? Um, um, Kevin Gozi writes here. Um, just um, that I say I would just upload the video to YouTube as unlisted and then post a the link. Uh, to discord this works yes of course and then um I, this is also, also how some already did it um so that um our, our videos are best uh, uh, chat on youtube but maybe discussion can take place in discord yeah this sounds really great this sounds absolutely reasonable it's the easiest for everybody um <clears throat> And then Cheop writes, but yes, I think it's better when the conjurer lose. Where where are we here? Okay, okay. You can also burn. The, yes, you can make this more difficult. <coughs> Cheer up, or right, everybody. You can. You can. You know. That's the point of it. You can make it uh, th that difficult. If you can turn any effect to maxed out slide of hand challenge that is there, there is no freaking reason to it. It's basic, it's it's really it's just uh it's retarded actually. It's it's just not right. It's not raw. It's just that does not work. Um, it just makes life more difficult knowingly for yourself. Why would you do that? There's that's absolutely. No reason to it. <clears throat> it is the simple way, kiddos. The simple way. That's what it is. It's also here in the um, chapter. Although I must say, these tips in this chapter, they are not so much really reflecting on the presentation. They are more. Um, um, they are more all little elements you know um of the whole picture <laughs> the very best method of performing a given trick is the easiest method and it is the method which should be used the complication of a trick for complication's sake a strange malady sometimes noted amongst conjurers should be rigidly a shoot i don't need a word what is a shoot should. Yeah, of course, I would have guessed that. If with a simple cut, you can secure the effect of transposing the packets and do this undetected, 
under cover of misdirection, this simple cut should be by all means be used. To use the pass under such circumstances is unnecessary and unwise. The real card expert invariably employs the simple slide which will enable him to reach a given end. Concentrating his attention upon doing the slide well rather than expending energy in making difficult and easy move. Remember always that it is not what you do but what the spectator believes that you do which is important. One of the very finest of all card workers has time and again performed tricks which have appeared to be absolutely miraculous. By the simple expedi expedient of looking at a chosen card carelessly held by the spectator. If you have the good fortune to be in the position where you can sight a chosen card, it would be foolish not to make the most out of it. Right? The only demand that need be made of a method is that it shall deceive the onlookers, bluff, audacity, swindles and barefaced deception shall are all fair grist in the conjurer's mill. If it is effective and it is simple in the bargain, so much the better. Now this, by the way, I believe causes controversy. Controversy. It was um, uh, the, the YouTube, YouTube drama here where um, uh, Chris Ramsey called out um, uh, uh, this. Uh, oh, it's, I forgot his name. The bla this black magician, mm. Surprisey, Surprisey. What was his name? <laughs> forgot the name. I need to find the name. Turn the music on again. Um, can you guys help me out how this magician was called? Anyways, there was this magician who would, um, who would buy stooges, right? And, um, And they would fake for Instagram or social media reactions. So the thing would go. He would uh, he would do a simple color change or something, and then they the, the, the Stooges they would go nuts bananas with their reactions, you know. <laughs> and I don't know. And and I kind of Chris Ramsey went all all um uh, uh, mental over this and going like this is ruining the um uh. Uh, the stand of magicians we all work so hard to make this a serious craft form and this kind of betrayal and stuff and i was like yeah in a way that is true but on the other hand dude this is just business as usual this is how it basically works right <laughs> does it it's a trick it's a tricky question i wouldn't sign this either but 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 but, 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 but um because it is um it is faking it is faking the um the um the um, uh, the um uh, emotions or the reactions um of an effect that they that they wouldn't have either way or the, or without them right so and that is kind of a betrayal in a context however where this is dates back to the early days of i don't know um uh The, you know, wrote um, uh, theater, the good old stooge. That's what they did, you know. Hey, applause. That was great. And boo, boo. That's what they did. That's what their first job was, you know, to, to heat up, to heat up the, um, uh, the, the, the atmosphere in the room. Or you know to to uh, to get a, to get a fight going so that you could get the fuck out of there because um, everybody because they wouldn't let you go with all the with the cash grab you just uh, professionally swindled into your pocket you know you know getting this is at just as basic as it gets basically I'm just now I'm just now um, drifting apart here. Um, how did I come to about Stooges because we got this. In the chapter here also, this is it's the last part here, it's called Confed uh, Confederacy. The use of confederates 
I call them stooges, but they have many more names. Amongst the audience is a practice the use of which each conjurer must decide for himself. Some incredible results may be had by having a convenient confederate on uh, hand to bolster a trick, but unfortunately that use of such secret agents is subject to very grave drawbacks. So, um, working with uh, stooges is, uh, you know, it, that's just what it is. Um, I found this really funny that with that this is what has this do what actually has this got to do with presentation so much I don't know but um it is of course um always the first thing when you look at something that that's really impressive and where you say the people that are in the close surrounding of it um they need to know the secret so that it works so they are com compliance. But they're pretending not to be in order to, to deliver the, um, the, the effect for the audience, right? And um, I mean, what about this um, whole Chris Angel thing when he was flying through the skies We're on a crane? I don't know, they, they got, but they got, got, got footage out there from the crane or how, whatever it was. And then the people who would go like wow wow you know they were stooges they were they were so uh, actors or just people that just, just uh, uh, extras for a couple of bucks just look in the sky and you know be super amazed you don't even have to shoot it at the same spot <laughs> <laughs> for the most uh, part of it and um um I mean, it doesn't matter. It's 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 created for a television audience, anyways, right? So the Stooges are part of the illusion, basically, just like to, to, you know, to 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 eradicate the thing that it's only working on television, which it is, right? Except for some uh, weirdos who make a tower bridge um, disappear with complex mirrors um, uh, uh, construction only visible for a small uh, group of people gets you wondering now is it stooges and a nice narrative or not i don't know i've never looked into this but uh uh but th but that just comes with the, that's just the nature of the of the um of the um the craft we are in we are magicians uh, we are professional uh, tricksters we fool people that's what we do <laughs> right <laughs> So, yeah, so if, I've, if somebody shows me a group of people on the telly that is freaking excited about something, I, I'm not, I don't give a f damn. <laughs> I mean, if I'm opening up myself and I just say, I just go for it, I go like, damn, they just made the, David Copperfield made the freaking Statue of Liberty disappear. I don't even know, I don't even care that I haven't seen it. But I believe that he made it happen for some people to see it. That's, that's enough for me to go like, you know, to tell the story because it's an exciting one. If it's true or not, it, who cares <laughs> at this point? <laughs> just uh, uh, just about, um, about the whole thing. We, we, we're getting ourselves involved in, 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 in magic. It's, it's, a crazy, it's a crazy bargain, you know? It, 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 it's a... Uh, it's a really, really wild field with with, uh, with a lot of uh, crazy things going on. So um, I'm uh, I could go on on over this topic for hours. <laughs> you can see. Are you guys having a great time? I'm losing my shit again. We got one hour and thirty minutes. Um, you can have a wild discussion in the comments, right? If the use of stooges in the manner I explained is, is if that is legit or if if it isn't legit, I would just say it's a different. It's it's just a different um, uh, method, um, f performing on a different scale. Um, of course, the uh, um, what what we are here dealing with that is uh, close up. Um, to parlor uh, card magic relatively or quite intimate performance situations with a lot of people um on the on the uh, on the loose and then we have uh, to, to 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 deal with this situation and um and nothing more right um except we're going to shoot 
for a YouTube video or something, but for the for just for 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 the, the classic magic um, uh, here we are confronted here with in the book. That's 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 you with a deck of cards um, uh, out out there in the open, and there 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 there's all kinds of uh, 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 stuff coming at you. So then we have this theme here, sleight of hand versus self-working um, feats. So this is a whole topic. My, I, we could do a whole live stream on this or um, uh, a whole video on this. Probably this is also something that will be passionately um, debated over in, in these uh, uh, um, uh, uh, times we're living in. At a certain point, with a certain set of sleight of hand, um, the, the the clever use of uh, gimmicks um, or the clever um, uh, implementation of other methods um, that can be a booster to um, to your magic um, and this should not, not not be underestimated also think about it with the tip we got you that the easiest method is always to be preferred sometimes a um um a different method than straightforward sleight of hand uh, is much easier and the la the audience does not care about the method um since your presentation is so rocking awesome um they won't even think about it now gimmicks or uh, gaffs or different um cuts can be a um a can backfire in the sense of they make certain effects easier but then you you've got to um You've got to work with a what we say a dirty deck, uh, um, or you got to get um, um, uh, d them gaps and gimmicks out of the way, maybe. But also, that's not a big of big of a deal. That is um, something that also comes natural in a way, like just like the pass, you know, when you uh, like learning card control, and you realize how huge the windows of opportunity actually are, especially if you are entertaining well, if you're if your um, characters get, getting into uh, into uh, becoming. Uh, becoming uh, stronger, your performance character becoming stronger, um, and you have plenty of time to, to ditch or to smuggle in a stranger card. So it, no problem, right? Um, or to do uh, deck switches, things like that actually become relatively easy. You won't really spend as um, uh, much time thinking about it anymore. You will sp spend, you will be spending much more time in um, in um, how how you build, uh, how you build the building blocks, how you shift the building blocks of, of the material you've been working with, right? Another tip. Um, uh, which I want to touch here uh, briefly, the um, importance of, um, of the inconsequential. Um, this is basically a little extra or d in a d different wording talking about um, misdirection. It's like where you put your attention on uh, to, where you bring your attention to, what do you focus on? That is what the people usually will follow. follow. And um, in, in your presentation, you create, a, you, you, you open up um, a whole world of opportunities for um, the things you do if you understand that if you are careless about the cards when you deal them or when you shuffle them uh, you can basically set up a deck of cards in front of uh, of um, your audience without them noticing it um, because because um, they they will follow you they will follow you naturally and subconsciously they will follow um uh, the, uh, the 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 center of attention right that's that's what they do they even go here and say something things so when you have something so, to hide put it in a super obvious obvious place right um <laughs> It's crazy. Um, uh, I know quite some really brilliant deck switches uh, that are happening when you place them onto the. Um, these are gimmick pr uh, props. I never looked at them. I just I just realized that at some point that you have then you you are able to just switch a deck when you put it aside and you do something else and you pick the deck up and th that's the moment where you switch the deck like if, if just brutally in in in, in uh, plain sight. Um, the, 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 that's just so true and um 
you can create really stunning your, your performance will be uh, will become much lighter um, for yourself if you if you um, um, start um, experiencing this truth which once again um, all of this is re uh, um, going back to the first um, chapter or to the first um, paragraphs here that this is um, hard work and experience um, you have to go through and it takes time right And then, do not, do not, uh, do do not make the mistake to keep on, you know, starting something new. Um, a few tricks, well routined, and then you know, tested and improved over time are more worth than you know one trick after another and after another. And uh, you know, you already know all all of this, but it's in here once again. Okay, and then there is this one section which is called routine and routining, and I will probably uh, we will probably have to have to, be, have to uh, go back to this um, frequently, and this is probably what is what is um, what what is the future of this channel is going to be. <clears throat> We're going to analyze, um, and thank you by the way, everybody, um, especially the odd maniacs for your um, amazing feedback with the um, exclusive live uh, session um, last week, but also on Discord. Um, you would love or you think it's a good idea, that's what I what, what, what I got from all um, of your feedback, um, to, um, to um, stay, to keep, it, to keep it a little more theoretical in the sense of analyzing tricks, um, like, like a little bit we just did with this uh, trick um, Chi Rob um, brought up. And then um, working on routining those tricks so that we can um, build together like, you know, like routines and then we test out. We can look at three-phase routine, this trick, this trick, this trick. Not an easy trick. We could talk about it and everybody goes, oh, let's give us a try and then we can come back and talk about it. Now, this is a long march route. It's not going to be, we're not going to hit uh, going to hit this every week, but maybe every two months or every three months or something. Um, uh, 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 thinking about how to, to, to how to work this out, actually. And, and you guys are very, very um, welcome to, on Discord just to, you know, um, uh, to, get, to get it rolling. Um, as you can see, I'm uh, I'm picking up on your feedback. I try to embed this also here into the live streams um, because that's uh, that's the way to go for me in the future. This is also what I need um, to uh, to progress. Um, each professional conjurer, we read. has his own method of routining, but a good one is to go through the actions as they would be made if you actually could perform magical feats. So we have a lot of um, kind of um, professional tips here um, for, um, for voice training and also performance training very common sense that we need to have a good humor um, whatever that means you got to figure this out yourself people have different tastes of humor um, that's a whole chapter on its own I mean uh, I'm as me especially as a German I'm absolutely qualified <clears throat> to talk about humor in an analytic way right <laughs> because um, as you know we Germans are the funniest people in the world and And this is kind of a trick that you go through the 
routine as if you actually had magic. So you don't do the palming and then you do the palming. You do it like like you would do it without the magic and you go in and it would be natural. You, you see, it's like I have a situation where I would go into the pocket and I have to go through the whole uh, bloody the technique of palming the card, and then I would, um, you know, go to go to my pocket, and I say, "Look, I got a card here out of my pocket." Right. So what you do, you run it in routine uh, with, without all this, and you go and look. I go into my pocket and I take the card out, and I try to simulate to simulate the, the whole motion as if you had really magical powers. Gives you an idea of how it should look in the end, right? Um, Our self-criticism here is extremely crucial. It's really good to record your um, your routines or your performances to practice in front of a mirror. Um, today we are all blessed with all this technology and we can use this um, to improve ourselves and, and, and being very critical uh, and working self-critical. No, it's uh, not enough to just uh, have mastered a specific technique so that it does not flash. And uh, it, it, it's not enough to have mastered um, uh, a walkthrough of the build of a trick um, and then um, just going through it like that. That That's not enough, right? Um, that there you can do this much better we can do this much better so so you record yourself and then yes you can really um, think about what you're going to say what you're going to tell we're going to speak about and then you you um, practice this and then you do it like that um, and then you improve step by step all unnecessary unnecessary action should be uh, to hand all unnecessary action should be rigidly suppressed Constant turning of the pack or shifting it from hand to hand is a disturbing element to the onlookers, exactly as constant riffling of the ends distracts from the effortless silent landing you should strive to make your own. The pack should be held at all times almost at arm's length, but always from the body. It is amazing how this appears to make slides impossible as those who have seen. Do not go for too much pattern and talking. Try to keep it short, knacky. Um, remember who, who got in, uh, who they say when performing minutes, uh, hours. Um, and also this is true when, when you're working standing, right? Wh which you do most of the time. Where's your deck when you, when you, when you perform this? For, for example, for a um, top change, like a situation like this, that's a good job, right? And when I come from, I'm, I'm far away, I'm left and right, I'm talking with people and I'm going like that, change the card. Very, nobody going to re recognize I can come back. Do, you see it when I come from the other side here because that, I'm going full into the camera, right? Something like this. But it changes automatically if you hear. Wh how, where are you, you know, where's the attention field? Now, of course, the camera is, that's not where you are usually with your audience but all all of this um plays a role all this is imagining what the people would see and then being self-critical about where you're at patter patter man here's so many things now popping up i haven't touched yet i feel like time is running out i'm sorry guys um i'm trying my best here The, the, maybe the last important um, and most valuable thing you can distract from this chapter is that that you have to find a really balanced um, way of um, of uh, um, talking, of um, telling the story, of presenting the pattern of. Um, chit-chatting with your audience you don't want to um just follow a um a script word by word with with not being able to um interact with your audience or to react onto the uh, or to react to what's coming from them that's that's just impossible it doesn't work at the same time um, you'd be crazy if you just go out there with anything, with, with, you know, which is like, let's see how this works. It's just improvising all the time. It, it's, it's not a good idea either. And the balance, and maybe 
in this sense, I'm closing here today because we had Dallas Taylor bringing up um, Aristotle, right? Um, and the, in the virtue theory, the, the, the virtues, uh, virtue with Aristotle is uh, it could is is not it's not a defined thing. It's it's not a static thing. It's a dynamic thing that um, that kind of you know um, uh, comes into reality through actions um, that are balanced, that are uh, balanced out between extremes, um, and what's the right um you know extreme um maybe less of it or more of it depends really on the situation and a virtuous person is enabled to um uh make a proper decision in order to act accordingly out on the situation um virtuously in that sense um Now you can criticize this on many levels, but just to break this down for um, us as magicians, a great presentation is never one that is just static, that is just just um, same thing all of the time, but at the same time, it is pretty much the same thing all of the time. And that is something where you can when you watch close up magicians uh, not close up magicians when you when you watch um stand up comedians um you will find on youtube um if you if you're looking for it um stand up comedians doing the same set for different audiences or maybe have you ever heard the same stand up gig in uh, in front of another audience It's quite exciting. It pretty much is a good example of what the of of what the difficulty here is. Yes, you have a routine. You have a set of jokes. You bring them together, and there is a certain timing that's always the same. But in whole, the atmosphere varies a lot because there are different people. Now, of course, a stand-up comedian plays in front of an audience and he's basically um, holding a monologue. Mm. as we as close-up magicians we are not necessarily funny as we talked about this you can be any character character you want to uh, um, uh, um, cultivate um, but yet at the same time we have our pattern we have our story we have our thing but we need to stay fresh we need to stay spontaneous we cannot bring all the same lines at the same time definitely not Now, what Hugard and Bruyere at one point here suggest practicing, and I've found this, I can confirm this from my experience. So you build up your, tri your, tri you build up your trick, and nonetheless, you have, first of all, to go through the, to, to the whole flow of motions. And you can only do this if the slides involved or the techniques involved are at hand, right? So um, you need to be, and that's why I'm always saying shuffling is so essential and cutting is so essential because it, it's all, it, it is just always, it, it, it always takes a part. So you need to have that. So you got this, you know how to shuffle, you have uh, different shuffling techniques at hand, or maybe just one. It's enough to get two tricks with the over and shuffle, one or two cuts. That's really great. You have your tricks, you got the tricks, and you got, um, let's say, two tricks or three tricks, and you, you have a general idea of what you want to, you know, what's the, the, the whole plot line. Maybe you, you, you connect it at the end, and you have a little um, part or a little story to tell with every trick, right? And then now you go to the trick. You, know, you can walk through the trick, through the mechanics of it, And um, now you have to synchronize this with your speaking. So what do you say at what point? And then you practice this like a mechanic. So you go like, and this uh, how this is just how you do it. You go you the trick, and then when you do this deal out, you say exactly this line. You say this, and you say you repeat it, you repeat this, you repeat this. You go through it several times, and then you just leave it be. Because of course you do not want to get in a situation where you say something and then you oh I forgot the line and then you just no what you want is that you say that you stay in the narrative in the story but you use the words that are that you can handle with right now so you're not following scripts you're improvising basically a script right and this is of course 
easy easier than just than straightforward being an actor because you don't uh, uh, you, you're not so much now playing a role in a development a character that is developing over a storyline you um uh, uh, you're you your your character is just you know the the background noise for the um for 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 the trick and also your audience gotta you know look at it and say what, what's got what's going on with that now why, why, why is he doing this and then you tell the story so they follow the story they follow the hands and they they're dealing with the character with the dude or do this you know whatever and you see how all these things who got in pro a putting here together come, they fall together they're all part of one of one thing that you're doing and and then after a while having after having having that thing you know resting there and you start doing this you will find that your and i believe who got employee they put it exactly like that that your subconsciousness kind of feeds you the natural words in this in the in the story and there you go and then you get this balance out and um this is really one of the most powerful insights um they are giving here in this chapter i believe so at least um do you, yeah, right. <clears throat> Coordinate, uh, coordination of trick, flow of motion and pattern, I wrote here. Do your tricks as you talk. The camera is overheating again here, guys. Um, do your trick as you talk and coordinate your gestures and slides with your pattern. Right? The more often you do this, the more natural it will be. When you have learned what you will say and how you will say it, put it out of your mind. You can learn your lines so well that your mind will grow very, for memory can be strained. After several days, go over your talk once more, but this time make no attempt to repeat word for word what you have learned. Your memory will feed you the highlights and although you may clothe these thoughts in new words, you will gain spontaneity. Spon you may not use the trick for which you have prepared in this manner for months on end, but when you do use it, you will find that you will remember what to say and how to say it. Now, the next step is to find an audience. <laughs> Experiment with it. Take out which is weak and add which you think will be strong. If you are non-professional, beware of your family and your close friends. Guys, beware of your family and friends. Beware of those suckers <laughs> they know you too well and will either be too helpful or too critical study instead the reaction of strangers they are impartial and unbiased by the way we also like a little bit of scientists here because the whole we didn't we didn't talk even yet just a bit really about the whole psychology psychology going on performing magic it's just there's so much to it we're also kind of scientists because um we of course observe we try at uh, with another part of us we try to be the um uh, the obs uh, observer you know who writes every detail down you know what is happening <laughs> whenever and this is a super big tip also here in a book whenever possible attempt to remember and i'm i'm i admit i fail so often uh, the, the turn of the phrase of any remark which you make without a uh, premeditation, which may amuse your audience. The lines unconsciously uttered are often the very best and can be worked into your patter for continued use, right? Um, but I believe in this in this uh, whole field of um, being funny and witty, you know, uh, presenting good humor, which is then here, which when I think about it now, is uh, absolutely reasonable to uh, put this uh, right there behind. Oh, wait, no, I lost again, completed my train of thought. Um, this is one more thing. Let them see that you enjoy your magic. Overall, when you're out performing, let them see that you enjoy your magic. But this is also maybe written for um, full throttle pros who, um, and you can, I believe you can burn out a little bit. I noticed, um, I had this, uh, this uh, talk with my brother once, who is a, a professional bass guitar player in a plane in a gypsy swing band called Django Lassie. Uh, they're not, they, they, they're about to break up now after 
decades of playing together and they had a really um, um, hot phase where they would be out every night and they played se several gigs a week and they were really um, um, doing it. And at a certain point, um, they, 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 you, you easily burn out, you know, you're playing the same thing all the time and then you go from place to place to place and it's all the same thing and it totally loses its uh, its charm, its energy, its vibes. It's just, you know, you're just delivering for money, baby. It's just now welcome in the world of a professional, right? And and I believe here um, that, uh, that um, this is something that can hunt down professional performers at one point. I'm just assuming this is true for Magic. I've experienced this also in other, and for me as a poetry slammer, doing the same sh show for almost six years every Wednesday on a stage, the same concept, and you know, I, I stopped it because I said I'm, I'm, I'm tired of it. It's uh, it's just, uh, there's no uh, there's no thrill in it for me anymore. And um, you know, and as Uh, good humor is priceless ingredient which smooths the path in magic as in all other walks of life. It smooths the path. It's just so true. Um, let your audience see that you enjoy performing for them and they will respond to your efforts with great appearance, um, uh, appreciation, with great appreciation. And that is also connected to the chapter here that's, um, that's saying um, the you or being you or what is it? Um, where is this? The being you, being you, being yourself. There's this. Which page is it? Freaked out. You yourself. That's on page of 437. Um, like, um, if there are character traits, you know, that it's good to emphasize or dramatize, dramatize for your stage character. It's also um, the way you're dealing with emotions, you know, there's the anger in you. Um, if there is um, uh, um, frustration in you, even neg negative emotions can be harvested in a, um, in a certain way. And depending on the character style, uh, in, uh, in very different variations. For me, as you know me, of course, comedy that is um that is a um that's an element i i i i would be stupid if i not use it and um i hear this very often you're so passionate about i can that that my passion really uh, transmitted uh, trans go swaps over to people and in that in that sense for me when i read here this line that um You should let the audience to let the audience see that you're enjoying what you do and that you're passionate about it. That is that, that is that's also a key element for me. And maybe this rounds it all up for today, because we are actors who are playing um, a character um, which is a magician. Um, we invite our audience into a role play for them to experience the impossible. We take them out of their daily lives, of their worries, of their um, qu questions, of, of, of their maybe uh, tired minds, and we, we, present, we present them with something. We offer them something um, that, that is... Um, um, that is impossible, that is unique, that is exciting, and that is our goddamn job, right? And you can't do this without a character. So, And this is just something else than just performing tricks, wouldn't you agree? And of course, acting um, becomes a, plays a big role. And at, at that point here, uh, we, um, uh, we, we, we get the key from the... Um, um, We get the key for the library for all the books of uh, of of um, acting and storytelling and narrate, uh, narration and and character building and 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 um, emotions and 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 so on and so on. It's and I believe there is a lot of literature out there. And if you want to be so kind, um, you can please um, if you know, know some literature that goes into this um, specific. Or that looks deeper into this specific area of the art form. Um, I'm totally excited if you would share this on Discord or maybe down um, in the um, in, uh, here on, on on YouTube. I 
I guess that's it. I guess, I guess that's all I have to share with you guys uh, with this chapter. Um, I can't believe we, I even managed to um, uh, to uh, show you a little bit with the cards here. This trick Chi Rob came up with, um, which was uh, which was really um, um, uh, pleasant to to watch. Once again, uh, the, your engagement excites me, and um, we have come already a super uh, um, far way this year with this um, live jam session series walking through expert card technique by Jean Hugard and Frederick Broé. You guys are rocking awesome. And once again, thank you all so much for your financial commitment. Also, um, who, who of you um, did that um, supporting me with, uh, with, uh, with a pledge on Patreon? That really means, really, really means a lot to me. Everybody tuning in on YouTube maybe have been watching this, watching this in the future up until to the end. Um, today is the 14th of July. We got 10 p.m. GMT plus two. I'm broadcasting from Berlin. And next uh, live stream is going to be about, uh, going to be in two weeks. Um, I believe this is going to be about, let me see, um, this is going to be where is this now? This playlist. I believe we're going to talk about the ambitious card. Can this be? Let me see if I can find it. So, guys, you can now um, you can go and get into the mode of um, saying goodbye to each other. You know, we, we uh, might eventually um, uh, share a few more words on Discord. So now I want to see where the freaking playlist is here. Yeah, there it is. Found the playlist. You, by the way, you find the playlist. You find the playlist also in the info cards um, uh, so that you can um, set reminder for all notifications. And I'm just... Um, I'm just here uh, on my on my own channel but that that's that was the that, that was the first but what where is the freaking wieso I wanted to why I ah, here's the here's the um that's the chat and here's the that was the first um first upload I, I had my haircut was nice and and I had nice mustache and now I'm 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 looking like a Beer man creature once again. So um, the art of presentation. No, we, we next week we are going to go into um, uh, slide of hand card magic with expert card technique. I, I called it. It is the chapter of uh, sundry slides. So. As, as said before, in, a, in a expert card technique, there are these chapters where they're just kind of thrown in, maxed out. You know, trying to give it as much reason as possible, but there's just a lot of material going in there, almost random. And the chapter it is uh, sundry slides. It is on page 113, so it's got vesting card, Tsingon thumbnail gorg, a cutting discovery, uh, separating the colors, setting a key card, the five card quibble, emergency card stabling. Drop control, the tap, single card bridge, a new glide, establishing a break from a bridge, transfer of thumb count break to little finger, rough return, bridge location, Bertrand's method, a variation, Mexican turnover, spread card, the double face, gambler's card, marking system. I gotta tell you, I'm, I'm excited to go into this chapter because I'm, um, I, 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 I know, I, I have some clues with some uh, he headlines here. Uh, but um, but not everything, of course. Spread card, double turnover, um, uh, double face, Mexican turnover, things like that. But I'm really excited. So this is going to be um, a little bit uh, focusing on the mechanics again. Um, but at this point, trying to be very picky, very selective to see what what is the right thing. You know, what we, what can we really use, um, or what 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 I suggest. To, to tackle um, and then of course we're going to, to going to be reading in between the lines because we got to breathe I have to have it to, you know to 
to add some bonus information where you, where you don't actually expect it. And then they, you know, um, they hugely inspire me thinking about magic here at this point, even although it's a very technical book, actually. And I'm, I'm really, really excited um, to, to walk this through further on this year with, with you guys. Rocking awesome. So, so what do you say? You got to cheer up the guys. I have to go. The kids make trouble. See you soon. Thanks, up, Mary. So cheer up is already gone. Um, uh, then we got uh, Dallas Taylor saying, just got here. Uh, cheer up, but cheer up. Night uh, strike, Kim, Kimara. Kim, oh man, I'm, t I'm, I'm tired. Um, Night strike, Kimara says, just got here. Still here with us, man? How are you doing? Hello, he says, thanks again, Otmarius. Dallas Taylor, many thanks. Let's uh, to digest, lots to digest, Dallas Taylor. Absolutely. It's, it's, that is, um, that is just, uh, uh, too much actually L lunatics i feel now tired too but that's okay you know sometimes you just fill your brain up with good stuff like blah, 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 and then you're gonna be uh and let it rest and then um something's gonna st stay there and just what i said before here today this is gonna stay with us this is not you know this is just no first contact you know that's like kind of yeah da, da, da. <laughs> Uh, 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 they say, um, so the Dutch today, oh, hello, the oh, ACR, awesome, ACR, ACR, okay, I'm too tired. I am currently working on trying to build my first routine, it's not so easy. No, it's not so easy. Let us know about it in Discord, and maybe you can, um, uh, just also now if you have. Po the possibility to shoot something you could easily you know go to, don't have to necessarily perform it say i have this trick um it goes like this i want to transfer like this and explain it and then guys can give you feedback you know this is also a way of working it it's not easy or don't do that just um uh, uh just uh make up your mind build it out practice it and then give it a shot and then um uh we're gonna slaughter you man <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm all, I'm all for um, making mistakes. Don't be afraid of making mistakes. That, that, that's the only way you learn. You know. So, uh, Night's uh, Strike Camera is uh, from the States. Appreciate the wisdom. Yes, the wisdom. <laughs> it's all here in the book. It's all. We are all just. You know, dwarves on the giants of shoulders, or sh shoulders, uh, uh, no, on the shoulders of giants, uh, dwarves on the um, uh, shoulders of giants, you know, this is all, that is all stuff that's out there for a very long time. It's been worked for a very, very long time. And now it's time to make this work for, for ourselves and to, um, to, uh, to keep it alive in, in, in our time and day, right? So, my beloved odd maniacs, true-hearted subscribers, all you crazy f folks tuning in on a regular basis, everybody just uh, shuffling in random. Life is a journey, and magic is the power that makes it happen. <laughs> Time to go. You know the drill. Practice and practice well, and it will come to you. Do not despair on the way. Sometimes it's overwhelming. I know, I know, but you are on the right path, and you're going to be good. I know also it's crazy times, so stay healthy, stay safe, stay sane. Be the best human being you can possibly be every freaking day. And don't worry if you fail or mistake there are others to help you out and the next morning it all looks all different and it's time to try again so kind of free with aristotle um nicomachean ethics right live a life in virtue be prosper and embrace eudomania or oh, it's called eudomania <laughs> oh man i missed it idiot Eudaimonia, eudaimonia. <laughs> uh, my name is Marius, and you be sure, more 
magical stuff is going to be uploaded very, very soon. Odd Mario's magic. I get subscribed. You damn money out.